Hey, what's up cats and kittens and shout out to all my Cerebralites. It's me, the Cerebral Diva, back with another episode of In The Loop. And in today's episode of In The Loop, we're going to be talking about actor Terry Crews, who has gotten himself into some hot water recently by comparing transgendered issues and transracial issues. Now, I know some of you are probably scratching your head saying, what the hell is transracial mean? Um... Think back to Rachel Dolezal. Um, a few years ago, Rachel Dol- Dolezal was working at the NAACP, um, where it was later found, and she was working there under the, the guise of being a black woman, um, much to the chagrin of her own family. Her family actually outed her <laughs> as a white woman. Um, and she was giving you a very convincing portrayal of a black woman, I must admit. However, she is not black, she's white. Now, a lot of people took issue with this. I personally had absolutely no problems. Look, whatever whatever path of life you choose to, to walk, as long as it is not infringing on my happiness, it's not my business. You know, I'm, I'm pretty much a sort of laissez-faire type of personality. I just, I try to mind my own business unless you involve me in it. So people were very upset about that and that caused a whole lot of hoopla. And so... Given uh, sort of the profile that has been um, given to transgendered issues over the past several years with people like Caitlyn Jenner and Laverne Cox and, you know, uh, Janet Mock and several other transgendered personalities that have sort of come to the forefront, you know, a lot of people are, and and also um, on the flip side of that, you know, we've seen issues with HB2 out of North Carolina, which is a bill that was uh, trying to prevent transgendered people from using the bathroom that correlated with their gender identities. So Terry Crews apparently has some sort of show where he poses these sort of social, uh, socially inflammatory questions, I guess you could say. And he posed the question recently, okay, the show is called The Hard Questions. And he says, why is it considered perfectly fine to be transgendered, but deemed totally unacceptable to be transracial? Now, First of all, here's the problem. <clears throat> if it's not your fight, I don't think people should even really have, like don't try to draw comparisons or parallel to a fight that you're not even in because there's no possible way for you to relate on the level that someone who's trans is going to be able to relate. So A, it's not perfectly fine for anyone to be for anyone to be trans. I mean, we live in a very prejudicial society where people are constantly judged based on who they are. I mean, we still have issues with race in 2017. I mean, and I don't mean that in sort of a, a a haphazard way. I mean, the issue of race is very prevalent in our culture. And we're talking about, I don't know how many years since the end of Jim Crow. And we're still fighting the fight for equality. You know, we still have issues with women's rights. And so to sort of to intimate that somehow being transgendered is socially acceptable. Now, I will say this. <clears throat> One of the things, you know, what what I try to do very often when people make these these blanket statements like that is really dig into the nuances of what they're trying to convey. And if I'm to take away any po- anything positive from, from him trying to draw the parallels of why is it considered perfectly fine to be transgendered but deemed socially unacceptable to be transracial, I think the takeaway, the positive takeaway from that <clears throat> is that he has rectified in his mind that he's okay with transgendered people because he he perceives it as fine. So I think if you look at it from that perspective, even though it's a very ignorant statement for him to make, I think the fact that he has somehow come to terms and, and, and come to accept transgendered people, that I think that that's the only positive if you're trying to draw something positive from that statement that you can draw. Otherwise, until he's been transgendered, until he's had that experience, until he's been discriminated against, until he's been um, told what bathroom to use, until he's been ostracized and, and all the things that transgendered people go through, I don't think that he can really speak to the plight of a transgendered person. And it's the same thing. It's why we talk about cultural appropriation. It's why we talk about um, women's rights and, and women's equality and, and racial equality. Because a lot of times people in um, the African American community are um, sort of um, perturbed when those who are of the LGBT variety draw parallels to to their struggle saying well I didn't make a choice to be black well being gay is not a choice either you know or you know you can people don't know that you're gay unless you know some people some people are are obviously or overtly gay um and some people are not 
And so a lot of people who are of the African-American hue or variety or ilk um, very often feel um, slighted by the comparison to LGB to those in the LGBT community. Now, those who are LGBT and black have a right to make those comparisons because they can draw from both experiences and they know the parallels and they understand the nuances between each of those. So the point that I'm essentially trying to make is that I don't think that Terry Crews was necessarily trying to be insensitive. I think that it's just a case of people just not thinking before they speak. You know, maybe if he if he has this show where he's posing these questions about trans issues, perhaps he might want to employ someone of the transgender variety so that he can run these questions by them and get a graver, a greater understanding in terms of, of, of how people think and about how people feel versus coming from a heterosexual male's perspective who can't relate in any way, shape or form to what that plight is. So. You know, I'm going to give Terry Crews a pass on this one, even though, like I said before, I think it was a very ignorant statement. I think the statement was ignorant, but I don't think that he was necessarily trying to undermine the struggles of of, of being transgendered. I really think that he was trying to essentially say that if we're going to accept, um, you know, trans or if we're if, if we're progressing I don't want to say accept because we, we haven't accepted transgender people. We're progressing. And to some degree, I actually think we're regressing based on what's happening with the Trump administration. Um, but I think what he was trying to basically convey is that progression for one is progression for all. And that if we're going to pr progress in terms of the way that we're integrating trans people into our culture and beginning to socially accept them on a very sort of nominal scale, that what's the problem with people being transracial <clears throat> not trans tra i'm not transracial i'm completely comfortable in in my blackness i don't understand what that struggle is i cannot speak to what the struggles of not being comfortable in your with your own racial identity would feel like and um i um i i look if that is your struggle <clears throat> excuse me i have a frog in my throat if there is <laughs> your struggle if that is your plight then I, I, I can't relate to it. I, I can't. And so therefore, since I can't relate to it, I can't necessarily speak to the nuances of what that feels like and what that means and draw comparisons and parallels because I don't wake up with that with that cross to bear. So anyhow, you guys, definitely leave your comments, your uh, opinions below. I'm really interested to hear how you guys feel, whether or not you think that there are some comparisons, whether or not you think Terry Crews was justified in drawing those parallels, or whether you think he was completely out of line. Um, just be respectful in your comments. I don't mind comments uh, adverse to my own. I just like, I like to have um, healthy debates. So if you have an opinion, definitely leave uh, your opinion. Um, and if you have something ignorant to say, please go to someone else's channel because I'm just going to block you. Um, anyhow, you guys, as always in closing, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember to follow me across all social media platforms. I'm Cerebral Diva on everything that includes Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Um, what else is there? Oh, and as always in closing, remember to live better, love harder, and think smarter. It is me, the Cerebral Diva, and I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a fantastic day.